the Oscars were held last night. It was an event that passed almost an almost entirely without notice, if not for one incident, which we'll discuss in a moment. Before we get there, it's worth reflecting on the fact that award shows used to be ratings bonanzas. I mean, there was a time in the not-too-distant past when 40 million people, 50 million people, would sit around their televisions on a Sunday night and watch a bunch of wealthy drug addicts give themselves awards for five hours. Those days are long gone. Soon, the era of televised award shows will be officially over. They'll no longer exist at all. And our children will look at us with bewilderment when we explain that once upon a time, we used to actually watch celebrities give speeches about how great celebrities are. They will certainly find that confusing. I have always found it confusing, and I lived through that era in history myself. The reasons for the disintegration of the once popular award show genre are many. One obvious factor is that the films nominated and awarded are increasingly obscure. Last night, apparently, something called CODA won Best Picture. Nobody has seen this movie. Nobody. There there is a debate raging right now about whether the movie even technically exists. Nobody knows. If it does, nobody knows where to find it. It seems that they just gave best picture to um, a a movie that exists only as a hypothetical, like a theory. It's an abstract concept. And this is a reflection of the deeper problem. Hollywood, infected with a terminal case of wokeness, is more and more insular with each passing day. It's obsessed with with itself, with its own moral superiority. And that tremendous sense of self-righteousness has caused it to collapse in on itself. One of the consequences of wokeness is that it obstructs a person's ability to see beyond themselves. And this is true for anybody who subscribes to this cult or is indoctrinated by it, but but the effect is amplified by a million in Hollywood because its denizens are, are already living lives of incomprehensible privilege. These people are already artificial, basically, self-obsessed, overindulged, coddled. You can see why they're all leftists. It is a worldview made for them and also, in large part, made by them. They're not interested in even pretending otherwise anymore. Now, they used to pretend. They used to at least pretend. There's always been the indoctrination, the leftist indoctrination from Hollywood, but it used to be a lot more subtle. They used to pretend anyway to, you know, um, to be uh, to, trying to appeal to a larger audience to be able to relate to a larger audience, that is over now. Last night, judging by the clips that I saw online anyway, because of course I didn't, like everybody else, I didn't actually watch the show, uh, they kicked things off by going political right away, wasting no time. Just planting the flag right away, this is what it's about. And of course, the first item on the woke agenda was to virtue signal about the fictional don't say gay bill that leftists have invented. Watch. We're going to have a great night uh, tonight, and for you people in Florida, we're going to have a gay night. Gay, 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 What courage, what courage. I mean, it, it's hard to fathom the bravery required to stand on stage in front of a room full of gay people and say the word gay over and over again. This is this is what heroism is all about. And they kept playing the hits. You know, Later in the monologue, monologue, they threw in a bit about toxic masculinity and also Mitch McConnell. Listen. You know, this year we saw a frightening display of how toxic masculinity turns into cruelty towards women and children. Mm. I tell you, damn that Mitch McConnell. I know. Yeah, because... When you think of toxic masculinity, the first person that comes to mind is Mitch McConnell. A little later in the night, Hispanic actor uh, John Liguizamo took the stage to applaud Hollywood's representation and all of the beautiful Latinx faces. Listen. Look at all these beautiful faces out here. All these beautiful Latinx faces. We got great representation here tonight, people. Oh, sorry. Not not Latinx, Latinx. Yeah, uh, I, I always forget how to pronounce that made-up word. I'm not exactly sure what a what a Latin X face looks like, seeing as how there's no such thing as a Latin X person. Latin X at best sounds like the name of a of a Hispanic OnlyFans site. It's certainly not the name for a group of people, especially because if this sort of thing is important to you, there are already numerous gender-neutral terms available to describe that group. Terms like Hispanic or even just Latin. But again, wokeness is insular, self-referential. It's gibberish to anyone who is not already fully indoctrinated into it. 
That's why the left has to work so hard and so desperately to indoctrinate children into the cult. Because they know that adults who grew up in saner times are increasingly turned off by this sort of thing and are rapidly tuning it out in a literal sense when it comes to the Oscars. That is, people were tuned out until the smack heard around the world. Now, you've no doubt already seen this clip, but let's all watch it again for entertainment's sake. If nothing else, watch. He is praying that Will Smith wins. Like, please, Lord. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> it's, that, was a, that was a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh-oh, Richard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the sh out of me. He's my wife's name out your f***ing mouth. Wow, dude. Yes. It was a G.I. Jane jump. Keep my wife's name out your f***ing no! I'm going to, okay? <laughs> I could, oh, okay. That was a greatest night in the history of television. Okay. <laughs> okay. Truly the most atrocious thing Will Smith has done since the Aladdin remake. Uh, it's, I mean, he, this guy learned nothing at, at all after spending all that time with his auntie and uncle in Bel Air. On the positive side, however, Smith's physical assault of Chris Rock completely overshadowed and drowned out all of the virtue signaling that came before it. You know, all the stuff, LGBT stuff, they had all the Ukraine stuff, and like all that's out the window. The celebrities in attendance wanted the story to be about them heroically chanting the word gay, wearing blue ribbons in support of Ukraine. They didn't want this to be the story. That's also why you shouldn't buy into any conspiracy theories that the incident was staged, okay? It, it, it was not. That's, that's a more absurd idea than the incident itself was. Now, maybe the VMAs circa 1997 may have staged something like this, but not the woke Oscars of 2022. This is entirely real. And we should admit the most entertaining thing that's happened at any award show in at least 25 years. Personally, I might actually start watching these things if the whole show was just a bunch of celebrities beating the hell out of each other on stage, like a really well-dressed version of Celebrity Deathmatch. But as fun as it may be to watch, that was nonetheless a physical assault which was committed on national television in front of literally dozens of viewers. Something tells me that if you or I had walked onto stage during an event of that kind, or any other kind, and committed assault against a presenter right in front of everybody, we'd be in handcuffs within 15 seconds. Instead, Will Smith sat back down, enjoyed the rest of the show, even won Best Actor later in the evening, where he proceeded to cry and paint himself as the victim of the physical assault that he just committed. Listen. Richard Williams um, was a fierce defender of his family. <laughs> I'm being called on in my life to love people and to protect people and to be a river to my people. I mean, Scientology really messes with your brain. Uh, just don't, don't try it, kids, even once. Only in Hollywood can a man assault another man and then 20 minutes later give a tearful speech about the power of love. I'm a river to my people by smacking Chris Rock. <laughs> also, keep something else in mind. Will Smith, and this is the most important thing about this incident to keep in mind, um, he has bragged publicly on multiple occasions about the fact that his wife sleeps with other men. He has long been out of the cuckold closet, very open about the fact, fact that his wife enjoys jumping in bed with strange men. So any temptation you might feel to take his side, to argue that this was a, a husband defending his wife's honor, as I've seen it, like a few people, a few conservatives even have said, well, this is, this is right. This is traditional values. Traditional values, he's in an open, he's a cuckold in an open marriage with this woman. He laughed at the joke at first and then looked over at his wife scowling and said, uh-oh. Uh. This was him doing it primarily as it, this was another act of, of, of emasculation by him. And any temptation you have to defend him must be mitigated by the fact that to Will Smith, defending his wife's honor does not include 
preventing other men from having sex with her. So you can, you, 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 you dare not joke about his wife, but you can have sex with her. Now that's a man of principle. As a cuckold, there's no honor left to defend. He, do, he doesn't have any. Neither does she. How can he defend what doesn't exist? But then again, they, they did award best picture to a movie that doesn't exist. So who knows anymore? It's clear that the smack was not an honorable man fiercely defending his wife from an extremely mild joke about her hair. It was rather a privileged yet broken and emasculated man lashing out like a spoiled child and doing what no no normal person in this country would be allowed to do and get away with it. He did what he did for his own sake because he could. Later that night, he was filmed at an after party dancing and singing while a crowd cheered him on. You or I would be sitting in a jail cell right now still. He was at an Oscars party, prancing around with his golden statue. Apparently, the trauma he suffered from Chris Rock's joke was not enough to prevent him from dancing. You know, a golden statue can heal even the deepest wounds, I suppose. Now, given that this was black-on-black violence and both men involved are fairly liberal, you may be wondering whose side the woke crowd would take, because it's not maybe not not immediately clear how this is all going to shake out. But then when you think about it, there's no real mystery. One of the central tenets of leftism is that words, especially words in the form of jokes, are violence. I mean, they hate stand-up comedians the most. And so, of course, assaulting a stand-up comedian, they love that. The emerging consensus on the left, uh, therefore, is that Will Smith was justified because Chris Rock's joke was a form of violence. This was self-defense against a violent attack by a comedian. That's the justification anyway, as offered even by prominent politicians like Ayanna Presley and Jamal Bowman. But the real justification is that Will Smith is a non-white, left-wing Hollywood celebrity, and so he's allowed to do things that the rest of us peons cannot do. That is the privilege of leftism, an ideology that in so many ways exists in its own universe. Listen, hit that subscribe button right now. Do it right now. I thank you for your compliance. It is somewhat appreciated.